Hi, I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks. We're in upstate New York, about 20 miles south of Lake Ontario, and we're on the deck of what will one day be our 41-foot wooden trawler yacht that we're building in our backyard. Now, we're first-time boat builders, but she was designed with the home builder in mind, and once complete, she'll be able to cross oceans and take two people comfortably anywhere in the world that they want to go. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. So just a couple more screws to go on the port side here for this stringer and before we can move on to doing these next, next stringers we'll have to go over to the starboard side and do the lamination process just like we did here and you know we're installing uh, two screws per frame just like we did on this stringer they go in at opposing angles because physics hates trying to pull things against that are at contrasting angles so that adds for strength and you know before we can do these stringers as well we also had to address an issue with the rabbit. When we laid out the rabbit and cut it, I stopped cutting at station four going forward. And that's because I just wasn't 100% sure it was right. And once you cut that rabbit, it's there. So you have to deal with it. So I held off on cutting it. You know, I wanted to see how these frames all started to fit. I wanted to see how the stringers came into the keel. I wanted to see how this chine came into the bow. And so I just held off on cutting the rabbit. And then now as we prepare to uh, get to the point where we need to install those keel cheeks, cut that rabbit because as these stringers go in, if you put them in first, it would be very difficult to do that work later on. So as I looked at it, uh, I just didn't think the rabbit looked fair going forward from station four onward. And then I took a batten and I sprung it around uh, the frames at the chine and into the bow stem and I noticed that station two looked low. It just, it wasn't a fair curve. It wasn't bending around smoothly. So then I, you know, I literally had a saw in my hand which I was about to cut a portion of station two to what I thought would fix the problem when I said, you know, I'll just stop, I'll disconnect it, you know, take the bolts out and spring a batten on the rabbit line and just double check. And sure enough, the rabbit line came out different. So then I reinstalled station two in a dry fit just to check and see how it looked. And it looked way better as far as fairness. And then when I bet, bent the uh, batten around the chine again, sure enough, the chine came into perfect alignment for the process. So the rabbit was indeed wrong. We made a mistake, no big deal. And you know, you build a boat, <laughs> and you build all these separate components and hope that they come together at the correct time, and I'm shocked at how well things have gone so far. Now with the rabbit cut and the keel cheeks cut, now we can start thinking about how these stringers are going to bend in to the front of the boat, because each stringer has its own position on how far forward it moves. But obviously before we can do that, we gotta go over to the other side and uh, work on that stringer. So for layout purposes, I started at the keel and worked my way out. So this would be stringer A, B, C, and D. And 
What we're working on today is the uh, starboard side B stringer, the second layer. The first layer has been epoxied in place, and so now we're dry fitting for the second layer. And obviously we have to dry fit just to make sure everything fits well. We're cutting the pieces to length as necessary. And the thing we're paying special attention to is that we're making sure that we're overlapping the butt joints of the first layer where the two pieces meet by a station and a half. And what that gives us is that on either side of that butt joint, the second layer will be glued and screwed into two frames on either side. So just for safety sakes and strength sake, that's giving us a little bit of reinforcement there. And what we've been doing with this installation is alternating sides. You know, we'll uh, put a layer on the port side, then come over to the star starboard, and then back to the port for another layer, and you know, on and on and on it goes. And in my mind, I'm equaling out the forces that are being exerted against these floor timbers and frames, and I don't know if that's important or if it's even a thing, but that's the way we're doing it, and it's working out fine. Once we get this B layer glued into position, and that's all gonna be contingent on temperature because uh, we're going through a bit of a cold spell. At night, it's getting into the single digits. During the day, it's in the teens. But once this is in position, then we can move over to the port side where the B stringer's already been fully installed, epoxied and screwed. We can move on to the C stringer. And I wanted to show you the C stringer because that's where it really starts to curve in at the bow. And we're gonna have to see if I can just muscle it into position or if we're gonna have to use some other method to get that wood to bend. However, when we look at our stock, and I'm gonna show you that when we get over there, I think I have an idea how to make it work. So when, once we get over there, I'll show you that. All right, our salute to service wall continues to grow. And like we said in a previous video, if you're current or former police, fire, EMS, communications, any kind of public safety professional or the armed forces, and you wanna have a patch from your agency represented on our salute to service wall, we would be honored to have it. So just send us an email at contact at cdreamerproject.com. We'll get you the address and you can get it sent out to us. Now we did get a really cool uh, item from a gentleman uh, who was the former constable on the Isle of Sark. And, you know, to be honest, I really wasn't that familiar with it, so I had to look it up. And uh, the Isle of Sark is in the uh, English Channel. It's a small island of about 500 people, and it's one of the last places on Earth where cars aren't allowed, only tractors and wagons. So it was really kind of neat to uh, trade emails with him uh, discussing the unique challenges he faced as law enforcement uh, in such a unique place. So it was really cool. So like I said, if you'd like to have your agency's patch represented on our Salute to Service wall, I'd love to hear from you and your experience experiences uh, in public safety so send us that email at contact at cdreamerproject.com
Well, the sun came out nicely yesterday afternoon. It started to get warm in here, so I threw on every heater that I had, and we got the temperature up to about 60 degrees, and we went for that uh, epoxy blue up on the B stringer on the starboard side. And then we put the heating cable on it. It did get cold last night, but I came out this morning. Uh, it already passed the fingernail test, so that appears to be moving along nicely. And with that done, that means we can move back over to the port side and begin work on the C stringer that we talked about previously. And like I said, I think the C and the D stringers are going to be the most challenging because they have the most curve in them, particularly up towards the bow. But even amidships here, you know, there's a very a gentle arc that is uh, taking place along amidships. So this wood is going to have to bend pretty substantially in some spots. Now, you've probably seen it in other boat building channels and, you know, classically designed boats. This was a regular occurrence and a frequent problem working with wood was getting it to take the shape that you wanted it to take. And oftentimes they would use a steam box where, you know, just like it sounds, you'd have boiling water, it would be contained in a large box, you'd put your piece of wood in there, and I believe the formula is generally uh, one hour per inch of thickness in that steam box and after that it comes out and it's usually more malleable so you can make it do what you want it to do. Other times guys would just uh, like soak it in water for 24 or 48 hours sometimes that was enough or pour boiling water on the piece of wood sometimes that was enough to make it bend but I'm hoping to avoid all that stuff for me. Now you know working alone you know messing around with water or building a steam box uh, you know I just don't want to do it. So if you'll remember when we machined up this stock when we got it, we just ran it through the planer. We did not go through the typical steps of what you do to make a board flat, straight, and square. So we just ran it through the planer to get a consistent thickness, and then we went over to the table saw. And every board has a defect. There's no such thing as a straight piece of wood. You know, curved, bent, twisted, whatever. What I did is I sighted down each board and looked for where the defect was. And generally there's a curve, you know, this way or that way. And what I did is I would put the outside of that curved edge up against the fence of our table saw, and then I would feed the piece through, and it would just kind of, you know, bend around depending on how severe the bend in the board was. And that ended up giving us a consistent width on each board, but it left that curve in place. And my thinking was is that, you know, First of all, I don't have the machinery to make something this long straight. With your joiner, typically, you can only effectively join a piece of wood that's twice the length of your infeed table. And, you know, while I have a pretty big machine, it ain't big enough to do, you know, 12, 14 footers. So my hope was that the, we could use the natural curve and defect in each of these boards to our advantage. So I sorted out our pile of wood, you know, the straightest pieces and the worst, you know, the curviest ones. And hopefully, you can see this in the camera how curved this board is because this is pretty substantially curved and for a woodworking project that would be a real bummer but in boat building it can be an asset so i'm hoping that with enough muscle clamps and a hammer we'll be able to make this wood do what we want it to do without having to resort to steaming or soaking in water so that's what we're going to get started on today
All right, I'm gonna mark each stringer at each station so that when we go to do our final glue up, I'll be able to get the stringer back roughly in the same position that it's dry fit here. Now, it's just too darn cold to do any epoxy work, warming cable or no warming cable. The outlook for the next few days is sustained colder temperatures, and I'm just not gonna risk trying to work uh, epoxy in those kind of weather conditions. So that's gonna have to wait for next time. However, everything is fitting really nicely. The stringers are flowing smoothly around the hull just like we want. We're getting very proficient at cutting those bevels and those good bevels mean that the stringers are in full contact with each frame and that's really important. We also wanna thank one of our viewers, Matt, who pointed out an issue with one of the bevels in the notches near the back of the boat where it gets really steep and angles really steep as it moves up towards the transom. Now, I thought I had an answer for him, but when I went out and looked at it again, it turns out he was right and we just weren't cutting those uh, notches, the bevels in those notches, deep enough to get the stringer flush with the correct side of the frame. And in my head, I knew what I had to do, but somehow in the application, I got it backwards. So Matt, we appreciate the heads up and we appreciate you looking out. We also want to thank our friends over at uh, Total Boat and Jamestown Distributors for my Christmas present. A brand new vest with uh, no burn holes in it or anything. It's great. We really do appreciate it. Uh, made by Dry Duck, which is uh, very fitting to go with our Diesel Duck boat here. So thank you very much. We hope everyone goes to the description of this video where you can check out the discount code that we have for Jamestown Distributors. Now, obviously they have epoxy, but they also have all kinds of tools and fasteners and paint. So please uh, help support companies that help support the Sea Dreamer project. We also wanna thank the folks who've participated in our salute to service wall. We're starting to hear from people from all over the world. And a couple of you have included checks in your envelopes to go along with your patches uh, as a donation. And what we really appreciate it. We're so grateful for the support, but I promise this is not some sneaky way we're trying to get people to uh, donate to the project. So don't worry about that now. We're more interested in hearing from you and your stories in emergency services and getting your patch up on our salute to service wall. We hope that you'll go and check out our Facebook page and our Instagram account. Make sure you like those so you can follow along in real time. We're also on Twitter and we have a website at www.cdreamerproject.com and over there you can learn about all the steps that we've taken to get to this point in the build. Now you know we love hearing from people so please leave a comment below or you can send us an email at contact at cdreamerproject.com and you know what the rest is. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time. <laughs>